Welcome to the My Personal Football Coach Youth Soccer Player Development Podcast, episode 54 with Jupp Osterveld. Welcome to MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Soccer Player Development Podcast. Discover all the secrets, hints and tips about soccer player development and soccer coaching from some of the leading figures in world soccer. Here's your host, Saul Isaacson-Hurst. Hey guys, Saul here from My Personal Football Coach and we are back. Uh, it's been far too long, I know, so apologies. Uh, been a really tough year, uh, lots of stuff going on for myself, but uh, glad to see I'm back and uh, going to be bringing some amazing top quality podcasts and content for you in the upcoming weeks and months, starting today with a fantastic one, uh, Joop Ustervelt, uh, who's the foundation phase lead at PSV Eindhoven, uh, one of the best academies in world football, uh, obviously uh, well known for developing top technical quality players and you uh, shares with us his incredible journey which started as a 14 year old and uh, now sees him working at one of the best clubs in, in Europe and he show, shares his, uh, his knowledge and, and, and all of his experience. And this is a really fantastic one, especially for you guys who, like myself, uh, like ball mastery and 1v1. Uh, obviously, that's a real massive part of uh, the PSV um, philosophy there. So uh, this is a real one you're going to enjoy. Lots going on with my personal football coach, as usual. Proud to announce the release of the new position-specific midfielder course. So this is the only position-specific um, midfielder course in the world so if you are a midfielder or you're a parent of a midfielder or you're a coach who wants to learn how to coach midfielders uh, this course is ideal it's a real um, technical and tactical um, in-depth look at so it includes tutorials and drills individual practices practices you can do with your uh, with your friend or a partner uh, key skills for that position so it's a real one-stop shop for if you're a midfielder to take your game to the next level ideal for aspiring pros or even beginners who play that position whatever position you are that will really improve you so check it out go to mypersonalfootballcoach.com click on player and then uh, position specific courses uh, also Proud to announce um, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough's academy is now using the My Personal Football Coach app. Uh, Middlesbrough joins Wolverhampton Wanderers, Seattle, uh, Seattle in America, uh, St Johnston in Scotland, Bodas Glimt in, in Norway, uh, Lokomotiv Tbilisi in Georgia. So just a long list of some of the pro clubs all around the world using the My Personal Football Coach app and hundreds of grassroots youth soccer organisations using the app. Uh, Middlesbrough, obviously, one of the best academies in the country proud tradition of producing homegrown players and playing them in the first team so thrilled uh, that they decided to use the my personal football coach app and the club partnership to enhance the uh, the uh, the provision for their academy school boys from 9 to 16 uh, if you're interested in the club partnership whether you're a grassroots soccer club or a pro club or you're a federation interested how the my personal football coach club partnership can take your club or federation to the next level just drop me a dm and uh, i can set you up a demo account and show you how uh, we can support your coaches and uh, your players and your parents at your club like I said, though, I'm back and uh, got lots of great podcasts coming up and a few more surprises coming up on the Inside the Academy uh, YouTube channel. So uh, make sure you keep it locked and enjoy this show. It's a fantastic one. So, Jupp Busterveld, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, can you just give us a little bit of a brief background about your, uh, just briefly go through your coaching, your playing and coaching journey, just like very briefly, and then we'll go a little bit more in depth after. Yeah, perfect. Um... I wasn't really good at football at the pro level when I was younger. So I was, I think I was 14 years old and a man in my local village asked me to become uh, the under nine coach of the local club. And I watched my, watch, uh, was better for me than, uh, than a professional football career. So I was 14 years old, was really young and I started my career at the local club. And after uh, four or five years, I went to uh, a big same professional club near where I live. And it's called the GVC Kijk. And um, I was 90 years old and was assistant coach with the under-13s. And we played um, second, uh, second division. It was really, really, uh, really high in, in, in Holland compared to the amateur club I was the coach in. Uh, second year, they, uh, they asked me to become the, 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 the head coach of the under-13. 
and then uh, I did my uh, my courses at the uh, Dutch Football Association. In my second, uh, for my third year at JFC, they asked me to become uh, the under-19 assistant coach, and I did in in combination with my uh, UEFA B course. But after three months, and it wasn't a good relationship between me and the, and the head coach, so they promoted me to um, to make me coach of the reserves, and we play also second division in in Holland, which is really high. Uh, High quality for me, and I was at that age, I was 21, and I had to coach uh, my players, and they were about around 28, 27, 26, so much older than I, I was at that moment. Um, so it was was really hard for me to um, to compete the guys and to um, to train and to to coach them on 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 Sunday, but it was a good uh, learning environment for me. And after that, they made me um, head of the youth academy. It was a little bit of a weird step, but. I, I would like to be um, a developer instead of a, of a coach at senior level. So that was the reason why they promoted me to head of the youth academy. And we all played um, second, second, uh, second division, the youth teams played. So it was a really big club. And um, the budget of the first team was around uh, 400,000 uh, euro for the year. So there was also a big, um, a big uh, amount of money for the youth academy. So we would like to uh, make it more professional. So I was um, I was re- responsible for um, all the 50 kids and uh, a lot of coaches when I was uh, 23 at the moment. So I was really young and proven and inexperienced. Um, at that time, the, the Dutch Football Association asked me to become uh, a football coach as well. And the main job that I had was to um, the players are very good enough to play as a pro level from under 10 to under 16. There was a sort of uh, uh, amateur amateur just of eight teams uh, train with them and we played friendly games against uh, big, pro, big uh, pro clubs in the, in, in the region uh, but also had the, the, the best place a sort of a pre-selection from uh, from national teams on a 14 on a 15 on a 16 so I uh, did it both ways just the amateurs but also the pros and he asked me to become an instructor of the, co- uh, the, the courses UEFA C and UEFA B um, and I also advised the clubs, uh, pro clubs, but also amateur clubs in terms of philosophy or in terms of youth academy or recruitment stuff. So it was a big responsibility for me. But it was, uh, it was most of the time it was part-time. So uh, it was a combination for me. I, I worked in a bar, uh, I worked in a garden, and I worked also 20 hours on the, uh, in, in my contract. But it was, I think, it was 60 hours in the Dutch FA, but also with my work at the JFC Cook. Um, so after that, I was 28 and I did my UEFA A course and I had a traineeship at, uh, at VVV Venlo. And uh, when I was 29, I, um, I graduated. So I, I, it was, was really hard for me to, to, to get on the course because in, in, Holland, in Holland, you only have 25 places on the course UEFA A every year. So it's really hard to come on a course and uh, to, to pass it. So I was 29 and had my first uh, full-time role at VVV Venlo. I've been there four or five years. And then uh, the next step for me was to work, to work uh, abroad. So um, I love job applications in, in England, in America. But um, I, do, I think I wasn't good, uh, good enough at the moment because they didn't pick me. And um, I had a traineeship three days at Bodo, Bodo Glimt, where Greg Bruton was uh, uh, academic, uh, head of the youth academy at that moment. And I was there for three, for three days for a um, job application to become the lead coach of the under-16. But I was second, so uh, the, uh, it, it didn't took me at the moment. Um, and then uh, PSV asked me to... Um, it's, it's a really weird combination because I, I was coach of the under-17 at VVV. I, um, I did under-19s before. So that was the, the, the age group I was working on. Work and then PSV asked me to become their, the lead coach on a 12 and to coordinate the development phase. So it was a huge uh, step for me to, uh, in terms of age, but also in, in philosophy, uh, because I was working with the players who reached the first team on the, uh, on the Premier League. And uh, two years later, I was working with kids from under nine, the best players, under nine players in Holland. So it was, a, it was a really, really, really combination. And this is my third year at, uh, at PSV Eindhoven now. So this is... Uh, I think in six minutes, my uh, my career of almost uh, 20 years. And so what, what's your role now at PSV then? You're, you're head of yeah, the foundation phase. Yeah, I'm head of the foundation phase, but we call it more as a, as a lead coach. 
because I every day I'm on the on the pitch to work with the youngsters from under twelve to under ten. So most of the time I uh, I'm on the pitch. Um, yeah. And when you have a head of coach, or, or, or you're the head of the foundation phase, you're more in the, in the office, and you have more to uh, to uh, re- recruit players and help the coaches to become better coaches. But I have a combination of all uh, of all three ways. So I, I, I'm responsible for the kids, but also for the coaches, but also for the philosophy, which is uh, which is different than other academies in Holland. Okay, so that's one one of a career already you've had since starting at uh, 14 years old. Yeah, yeah. And you've had great experiences. Let's just wind back a bit. Talk about your role then at the Federation. I'm interested there just with the um, the, the, the youth recruitment, the talent recruitment uh, role you did there. And, and did you did you do the C license as well? Is that right? You were working on the C license? Yeah, I did the C and, and, and the B, but I was uh, an instructor. So mm. I, uh, I I worked um, at VV at the at the moment, but also at the, at when I was uh, at a youth academy at GFC uh, Kuik. And I had a combination between the both jobs because I think I had 20 hours at the football organization when I worked at VV and 20 hours at VV. And and my my job was it was it was both ways because it was just the same recruitment region from VV. It was also the same as um, as a Dutch football organization because we 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 split Holland in six uh, areas and I was responsible of one area. And uh, it, it was both ways. It was a pre-selection for national teams. <laughs> so uh, the best, uh, I worked with five pro clubs and the best players of each age group. Uh, they went to went to my team and we trained once and we played big games against PSV, Ajax, but also against Genk or uh, uh, Gladbach in Germany. What, what, what were also, those? Uh, what were the five clubs there that you took players from? Uh, from VVV Venlo, uh, Roda, Fortuna Sittard, uh, MVV. So the the the, the pro clubs, some play uh, first division, some play in Premier League, but it's, it's a really small area. So um, because of a, a lot of pro clubs in just a small area, you split your best players in, in, in the four or five academies. So if you bring them all together, you have a good team and you can compete against the big clubs in Holland. So one of the reasons for the FA was to to uh, appoint me of, uh, in their job to, to uh, develop the best players in, in that region. But it was it was both ways. Just just not only the the, the, the pro players, but also the the amateur the amateur players uh, to help the clubs in, in in recruitment and to to bring all the best amateur players together. And uh, before they can they can make the step to the uh, the pro clubs, uh, uh, and not only the pro clubs in Limburg, but also uh, PSV or uh, NEC or uh, near where they live. So it was both ways. Just amateurs, but also uh, the the, so, the um, pro players. So, so so they started at 10. You did that from 10 to 16 years old. So you'd have the best 10-year-olds in from the clubs, one, one, one elite group from all the clubs, and then same 10, 11, 12, 13s, 14, 14 Yeah, the, the elite group was under 13, under 14, under 15, under 16. Okay. Um, and we helped them in recruitment uh, from under 10 till under 13. But you saw a lot of players from the amateur clubs, the elite groups went went to the pro clubs because... Uh, the amount in the recruitment staff of that club is really, is really, is really low. So they are really uh, happy with uh, the Dutch football association that they help them in the recruitment staff, but also to um, develop the best players, not only from the amateur clubs, but the pro clubs. Because if you put them all together, we, we've won from Genk and from Gladbach. Because if, if you put them together, you have a quality team. But if they are their own club and they have to de- de- develop with their own teams or play on, on a really bad level, they won't be better, so this is the reason why they were quite happy with our, uh, our did, did, contribution. Did, did, does, they, does the federation have that same agreement with big clubs like Ajax and Final? Do they share their players out for regional, the regional yeah. teams of the young East? Yeah, they do. They do it. It's uh, <coughs> we, we have six. We have six areas, and they work with the Dutch football association with the amateur players. Uh, but because there were a lot of big clubs in the, in, the, in, the, in the province of Limburg, they uh, they put one elite group together. To help them in the sort of pre-selection for national teams, but also to develop them, develop them on their own uh, on their own level. So at the amateur point point of view, yes, they do. But at the 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 the, the, the pre-national teams just just uh, at the moment, two or three years ago it, in, in Limburg or is this in, it's in the south of Holland. Okay, and so just tell us a little bit about the your your ch- being a tutor on the C license. Um, how much does it cost to do a C license in Holland? For example, do you know what it is recently? Yeah, it's around, it's around 1,500 euros for the course. It's just, it's, and then, uh, and how long does that take? A, a year. 
So it's once it's once a year. You have um, twenty five sessions, and the <laughs> sessions is uh, it's three three hours, and you have to work like as a trainership, and and a big amateur club. So you have to be a coach, and you have to uh, have to work with a team. And once a week, you have a session. Um, in that point of view, and that, that way it was it. Uh, it was in Venlo because I worked in Venlo. So they came to the stadium, and we had a course in the stadium, and they had a practice team outside the stadium. So where they can, where they can work with, and they had uh, their traineeship at their own amateur club. So that's quite a lot of hours, isn't it? Saying they do 25, three-hour sessions in a year. Yeah. 75 and, hours. Yeah, and they have a lot of homework, and they have a lot of time they have to invest in their own development at the, at the big amateur club. So that's that's quite big, and that's the reason why it's really hard to to get on the course, but also to uh, to finish the course because a lot of people struggle with the time because most of the of the of the uh, of the um, the guys who are on the course are are, are father at, at home or they have are really young, 16, 17, and do another uh, another study of another course uh, for the primary school. So this is is really hard a really hard combination for all the, the people that are on the course to. Uh, to finish it. So give, give us an example, what sort of things are you covering on the C license? It's, yeah, the, the problem in Holland is that's, that's, I always have uh, an, an argue with, with the Dutch FA because we, we teach uh, the trainers to uh, analyze the game 11 v 11 or nine against nine, against nine and um, they want to make a combination between the train, training session and the 11 v 11. But if you look to, um, to youth football in Holland, I think the, the really important things before you can analyze the game or before you can train six against six or nine against nine. Um, so we have a lot of coaches who are really good to analyze the game. They're really good to, to train nine v nine. But they have, for example, they have 12 players on the training sessions. Um, so we, we make a combination between skills and between possession games, between six v six, six, six to 11 against 11. But in Holland, the, um, the FA wants... Um, they have they have a philosophy that they have to train always um, related to eleven v eleven game. So we have a lot of good coaches who can't give an uh, and an dribble exercise or they can't give a, a pass and movement game, but are really good to coach the uh, nine against nine or six against six. This is it's a big yeah, it's, it's a big problem on at the moment now. I think, in my opinion. How much like individual technical work is involved in that C license in terms of like dribbling, turning, shooting technique, technical stuff? Yeah, not, not enough, bit. not enough. Yeah. So in, in my opinion, you have to work with uh, with the skills, <laughs> and, and the skills become principles, and the principles become tactics. Um, but they, they only talk about tactics, and they only talk about uh, how to build up, of how to put pressure as a team, of how to defend as a unit, of uh, how, how to how to score goals, but. So it's not the individual stuff, it's more the team stuff or, or based on a line of just the defenders of the midfielders or the attackers. So it's not based on, on skills or, or principles, but it's just based on tactics. It's funny that because I had René Mullenstein on the show recently and uh, I've had many other people from Holland on the show and he was talking about how that he felt maybe the, the Federation courses were too game-orientated, too team-orientated and not enough individual technical work. It yeah. seems strange to me because you guys have such a culture of individual skill ball mastery 1v1 at you know your club all the academies you know ix and psv final have such a, a culture of technical training how that's why that's not reflected in the the, the uh, federation courses yeah it is this it just just helps coaches to think about a structure because there's a structure of football and i think that's that's really good from a dutch fa but you have to the, the structure is um it's not everything for kids because if you uh, if you're related to, to from from skills to principle to principle tactics, it's more easier for coaches, but also for for kids to help them to to de to develop. And you see a big difference from uh, uh, you see a big difference in philosophy between Ajax, PSV, and the Dutch FA in, instead of uh, how to um, how to go um, to develop the players, not only the younger players, but also the players and national teams from under 14, under 15, under 16. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's just move on then. Talk about then your your work at Venlo, the new the new job there. Tell us about the club and the philosophy and and you know and, and just and what you did there. Yeah, it was um, when I joined VUV, they played first division, and uh, the first year they promoted to the to the to the, to the Premier League to the Eredivisie. It's a, it's a really small club with a really small budget, 
but it's, it's also good. It was really good for me to work there because I had the 20 hours at VUV in my first year and 20 hours at the Dutch Football Association. So I made a combination of, of the two jobs. Um, and they played, all, all the youth teams played uh, first division. Um, some teams play uh, uh, Premier League now, uh, but two years ago it wasn't. Um, so it's, it's a small club where a lot of um, a lot of people with a, um, not, not a full-time coach, but a, a part-time for 20 hours and with really young coaches when I, when I joined. But it's also good because we're young coaches, you want to, in, uh, to invest in their own development, but also in the development of, of youth players and from the philosophy of the club. So the first year I was on a 17 coach, uh, but it was really, it was really hard for me because um, uh, I, I went to West Ham, uh, sort of the traineeship because they, we, we all together, we had a sort of uh, connection between VVV and West Ham. And Terry Wesley was the head of the academy then. And he asked me after one week a question, are you a first team coach or are you a developer? And, and my point of view, I was a first team coach. So my first year was really, um, I was really, really happy when we won the game with 1-0 when we played really bad, re really bad. And I was really sad when we played a great game, but we mm -hmm. lost 2-0. So I, I was a first team coach at the moment. Um, but it's really good to get experience in the club because the head of the academy was, uh, of still is Ro Ro Roger Bungartz. He worked in, in America, but he's, he's a really good head of academy because he, he, he gives you the experience. He lets you make mistakes so you can learn. Um, and that, that's really good of him, but it was also the philosophy of VUV. Uh, have a lot of young, talented coaches and let them make mistakes. And he, he, he provides us from, uh, from, from good advices and he let us make mistakes. So I, I've been there for three years. I was three years on a 17 coach. And last year we, uh, we, uh, we became champions of, uh, of the division. And it was a big change for me in my first year and my third year because I was more developer than a first team coach. And it was not only sh short term, it was also long term development, which was, uh, which was really good. And he asked me to become, um, to become the head of the uh, development phase. So I was not only uh, focused and responsible for under 70 players, but also I made a plan from four under 16 to under 12 players. Not, uh, not only the players, but also the coaches. This was more, uh, more like an assistant head of the youth academy. And we made philosophy together. I had some stuff from West Ham, uh, which I put in, in, in the philosophy of, of VVV. And, um, so, so, so this uh, is this is this is Venlo, right? V, what, what you, this is Venlo. What, what, is, what are you calling it? VV. What's what's the abbreviation? Because it sounds like VSV. No, it's v -V -V Venlo. VVV. Yeah, sorry, that's yeah, what it's yeah, Just to clarify <laughs> that for our listeners, because it's VVV yeah. and PSV can sound a little bit uh, similar, but it's PS. It's, it's a VVV. But Venlo. Yeah, it was it was VVV, and and, and and my my second role was <laughs> I was also head of the recruitment, so just the same as the Dutch football association was the same region. So I combined it. So I was also the head of the re recruitment. So I was responsible for uh, for recruitment for the development phase, and I was uh, the lead coach of the under seventy. So tell us a little bit about that your recruitment role. Then, how did that work? Are you going out and watching grassroots games, or are you just managing the scouts? And what sort of players are you looking for at Benlo? Yeah, I, I manage the scouts, but I said uh, earlier it was really hard for us in the province because of the big. Uh, because of the uh, big amount of pro clubs were in the same region, so it's really hard to to uh, to recruit the players. So we went uh, 25 kilometers to Germany um, to recruit the best players. So about around 50 kilometers around Venlo, we recruited all the, uh, the, the the kids from nine till 17. And um, but I, because I was a coach on on Saturday, I wasn't able to uh, to recruit. Sometimes I recruited in the morning at championship clubs, but it was really hard for me to make a good combination. So we had, uh, we had elite, elite groups. So the, the best under 11 amateur players went once a week to Venlo. And uh, I, I trained the guys. I trained the players at the moment. So that's also the reason why we we, uh, we had the elite group once a week. So I can uh, make what, decisions. What, um, what, other, what other teams are in that area of Venlo? What's the other big, what are the big clubs in that part of Holland? Yeah, well, yeah there's, there's, there's Roda, there's, there's NEC Nijmegen, there's um, a little bit of PSV, but also uh, Gladbach and Genk are the big, com oh, wow. a big competition between, between Belgium and, and, and Germany and Holland. Because, but but VV Venlo is not the biggest club, so if, if they ever make a decision, if they want to go to VV or to Gladbach, they go to Gladbach. And at that moment, we knew that. So we, our philosophy had to be really clear. 
Um, so, so we could give a good advice to the players. If you come to VUV, it's not just a footballer, it's just the person we, uh, we, we, we train. We, we have a combination between both sides. And so um, we have to convince them to, to move to VUV instead of the big clubs, but also to other clubs, NEC or, uh, or Roda. So it was a big competition. So how do you, I mean, and so players 13, 14, 15 can leave, no problem, go to another club. There's no contractual agreement or they have to play some compensation. How does that work? Yeah, that, it, it, when you are in the pro club, pro club you have to, um, it's 25,000 euro for a year at the moment. Um, so, for example, if you want to play with three years at our academy, you have to uh, pay 75,000 euros. So right. the, the, there wasn't a big competition uh, from players who are in the club, but it was more competition from amateur players around on a nine, on a ten, or on an eleven, because there was a big competition um, for the amateur players. Okay, and tell us a bit more then how how you you talked about that developing the person. Tell us a bit more about that. How do you? What was your unique selling point to players in terms of your philosophy and your 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 holistic development? Yeah, I went to um, I went three times to West Ham, and it's quite unique in Holland, but not in England. But what I saw in, in West Ham was the um, individual development plan. So we, we, made, we made a book at VUV, a development book, we, we called it. Um, and we, we gave it to the players, but it's quite unique in Holland. And um, the first part of the book was to getting to know the player. So they had a, a sort of introduction about themselves, but also at their, uh, at their family and at their, their hobbies and at their, at their home situation. So first of all, they had to introduce themselves, and the second part of the book was to develop develop them on their um, on their focus points or on the things that they want to improve. So it's just we we had a plan for each player who, who joined VVV, uh, short term, in half a year, but also long term because we had a sort of a pathway for for all the players in two or for three years. So we just we we advise them please come to VUV because we have a we have a pathway for you not only for a year but also for three years. So we, we convince them that they trust us as a club, and this is a it's a it's a it's not a big club it's, it's a f family club where where everybody knows each other. So it's really where the players are really really happy because um, the atmosphere is, is is quite good, it's quite friendly. Um, the coach are really friendly. The the head of the academy is really friendly. You, you see all the staff every day. So that was really a, a good a good point to convince the players and the parents to come to VV at the moment. And how do you how do you or how did you judge success there at Venlo? How does the academy yeah. judge success? Yes, the, the, the success of players who reach the first team. Um, if you look at the first team now, they have um, lost. They played a last Saturday. They play a match, and I think they played six, six players from the own youth academy. So that's the best the setting point, not only for the players, but also for recruitment and for for the academy. So that's that's the main thing. And we had a, a high potentials in each year, and we we stretched the high potentials. So we uh, also for our own players, we had a sort of pathway, and he has also an, uh, a development book, and we moved them up uh, twice a week. Uh, but also we trained with our elite group from the best or the, the high potential players of VUV. So that's the, the, the was a unique selling point for, uh, for our high potentials and that they could stay at VUV because we, we are able to challenge them on their own level. So for example, we, and on the 14 player, he played at under 17 and he tra tra trained twice a week with, the, with under 17, but also on the 15 player who trained with under 19, just one or two times in a week to, to challenge them. So that's, that was the, the big center point at the moment. And of course, just like every academy, but for Venlo, is, is the, because it's a big competition, they don't have really good teams on top level in Holland, but they have top, they have in every age group, they have two or three or four good players that are up, up, up the top level in Holland. Mm -hmm. So if you challenge them, they can reach the first team. Interesting. Okay, then talk, let's talk about your move to PSV now. Um, what was your what was your first impressions going to that club? Massive club, obviously. You look, you got those two stars on your chest there. Great history. Uh, what what was the what were your first your first um, you know what first instincts hit you? What happened? What were your first impressions of the of the great club there? Yeah, it's it, it's really big. You you can't compare it with with uh, because I think we had uh, we had eight man staff at VVV and I think there are eighty staff at PSV, so it's, it's a huge difference. And you see big stars like uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy, uh, Mark van Bommel, 
uh, Johan Vogel was, was there. So um, at the two times a week, I was on the pitch with Anna 17. And uh, well, I was yeah, top level in Holland. So you, you can't compare it with my own Anna 17 when I was at VVV. Uh, but also, in, um, I, was, I was responsible for the foundation phase. And it's unbelievable. I saw kids and I still see kids from, from 10 years old. They are so talented players. I think they are, are, are top European level. So it was, yeah, it was, it, it was not my, um, if you look to my own pathway, it's, 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 it's really weird to become from under 17 coach, you become the lead for nation's faith at PSV. It's a huge difference in age. But I saw, I saw that. <clears throat> the, the same what I did at VVV. Uh, and in my previous uh, uh, career as as a coach, I was really um, yeah, I was really happy to 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 be there and to work and to uh, to develop not only the players but also myself. So let's talk about your first role then. What was your first? Remind us your first role at PSV as you went in there. Yeah, we had uh, um, when I joined the head of the foundation phase was uh, Rick Roy, and I was uh, his first year. I was his assistant and. Um, he knew at the moment he uh, he made a move to to become under sixteen coach a year later. Um, so um, he, I assisted him the first year to took over the role the the second year. It's the first year I um, I looked uh, to the philosophy, I looked to the coaches, and I analyzed the the coaches and and, and the staff and, and the players. And the second year I uh, I made my own philosophy, I made my own plan to what I thought it was uh, good to improve. To make it to make it better because it's quite a unique um, uh, a unique way of working what we're doing at the at the at, at the foundation phase at PSV. So that was my so first role was uh, was assistant, and the second year I I took over the job from Victor Roy. Now I'm responsible uh, of the technical area from the foundation phase. Okay, let's t talk about that then. Your unique philosophy at PSV. Tell us a little bit. Tell us about that in depth, please. Yeah, we have. Um, um, uh, five years ago, you have uh, just one under 12 team at PSV. And all the boys from, from the start of Holland, they have to travel to Eindhoven each day, of every day. Um, and now we have development centers in, in, in Holland. So we have um, five development centers in, uh, in the middle and the south of Holland. So, for example, we have uh, one in the middle on development center. It's around uh, Utrecht and it's around... Uh, I think 40 kilometers from Amsterdam. And we have one in the east. We have one in, uh, in Limburg, the province where I worked uh, in my previous jobs. We have one in Eindhoven. We have one in the west. Uh, I think it's uh, 25 kilometers from, uh, from Rotterdam. And at each uh, development center, we work with under 10, under 11, under 12 teams. And on each uh, development center is, is one or two coaches for, for each uh, uh, age group. And it's around uh, eight players. So. We have in total, we have uh, five years ago, we had uh, 18 under 12 players. And at this moment, we have 42 players that play in under 12. So we have more players we, we, uh, we can develop. And uh, the biggest advantage is they don't have to travel a lot because they have, to throw, they have to travel to a development center, which is near to their home. So instead of traveling three hours a day, now they have to travel a half an hour each day. So this, this is a great benefit for, for the kids. Um, so how does that work then in terms of you have a, the, the under 12 team and then the other the other the other squads are like uh, shadow squads or are they part of that first team do they play the fixtures or how does that tie in with that yeah we, we, the, you know? yeah, we, yeah we don't have a, we don't have a team we have we have four we have 42 uh, players in, in each age group and we have we have two teams where we play our matches with so we have two squads that play in the competition game each Saturday but it's it's not a, a regular squad because we uh, we change the squads every every week. Uh, sometimes we select on um, on performance. Sometimes we select on uh, biological age, and sometimes we um, on length. Sometimes um, on the, on the development center. So we mix the teams every Saturday. Um, so we don't have a, a regular team in the competition. We have uh, we have different teams each week. So because... basically, so let me just. So you to interrupt you. So basically, you have all those. You have a squad of forty-two, for example, in the tens. And each week, you know, if you're going to play Ajax or Feyenoord on the Saturday, you'll choose players, different players from the different regions. But then I'm interested. So then, how often, for example, do you 
as the lead foundation see those players if they're training all these different areas how do you as the head of them see those players and how do you how do you know how who to select how does that work it's difficult just it's a great idea because you have a bigger base uh, but my, my 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 question is how do you know who do you how do you keep a, how do you monitor all those players personally yeah we have um uh, we have we also have a, a welfare coach and, and a skills coach and uh, we we both travel to all the development centers so uh, um our philosophy is to be once in three weeks on each location on each development center so that's i think i see on saturday i see most of the kids uh, and the other kids i see once in once in two and in three weeks but we have a sort of a once once a month all the kids from each age group come to to the half gun uh, so they can train together but also we are going to measure the kids so we we measure the kids on uh, on sprints we measure the kids on uh, on how they grow or uh, we have a uh, um we test the, the the balance and how how far they can jump so if uh, we have a pass passing tests so we have a lot of tests and each month we 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 measure our players so so i see i think i think each, each player i think i see two or three months two, two or three uh, times a, a month but i have a good cooperation with uh, with all the coaches and uh, we we make a selection by month and but we mix them every Saturday because we we believe in uh, in adaptability. So we also switch with our coaches because, um, for example, one kid uh, uh, one one kid has one mentor, but his mentor train trains him only once a week uh, because uh, we have under ten players who train with under twelve, and they play for example under under eleven games on Saturday, and they have three or four different coaches each each uh, each week. So we think that's really good for adaptability. So tell us about the mentor thing. You, just, you mentioned that briefly. Each player has a mentor, you said. So tell us a bit about that, because I've heard this is what, when I was at Ajax, they talked about this as well, having mentors for each players. Yeah, we have one main mentor. Um, and, and at PSV, we work also with, uh, with, with, with the book, with the development book, with the individual development book. Uh, I brought it from VVV. I brought it to PSV. But that's, that's, this main, that's the main thing in their development. And they have one main mentor. He's working with that book and with the player. But you have, you have uh, also six mentors for their uh, uh, things they want to improve. We, we, we call it outstanding abilities. Uh, some call it super strengths. But they have three or four outstanding abilities. Um, and for each ability, they have a, a, their own mentor. And a mentor can be uh, Kevin De Bruyne from, uh, from City, but it can also be uh, a first-team player from PSV. Or it can also be uh, a coach, but also on a team player. So they have... The most have one main mentor, if he was responsible for the development, but they have also sub mentors to help them in their outstanding abilities, or also uh, to work with the focus points that are the weaknesses, what they want to improve. So, so, so that's this the, mentor, the mentor would be one of the staff, one of the head coaches, will they? One of the coaches from the academy. Yeah, yeah, because um, the, the, the main reason why why we do this is because if you are my player and we don't have a good relationship, you can't develop really good. But if you have eight coaches um, and you like two of the eight coaches, you, you can work with him because he, uh, he's better for you to develop really well. But in the second year, you have another coach. Why is it not possible to work with the same coach as what you did the, the, the year before? So some kids have a mentor for, uh, for example, passing, and they have three years the same mentor. So that's really good at, the, uh, at our, uh, our philosophy. That they how, can how choose... Much? How much contact time do they cut? Sorry to interrupt you again. How much contact time do they get with the mentor? It uh, depends on the player. Some some players see the mentor three times in a week, but some uh, uh, some kids see the mentor just once a week. And uh, for the, the mentor is responsible to talk and to chat with other coaches. How was your development of the player when I wasn't around? So um, and the mentor is not the coach on Saturday. The mentor is just just the, just the, the coach who help them once a week or twice a week with the book. And how was your development this this week, and what do you want to achieve for the next week? And so, for example, if I'm a coach, how many how many mentees will I have? How many players will I be mentoring at their club, for example? Yes, yeah, seven, eight, or nine uh, players in each mentor. So we have um, we have sixteen coaches, sixteen part time coaches in our whole um, in our whole uh, plan of the foundation phase, and we have three. Yeah, I, I'm I'm the head, so I'm also a mentor of some kids. Um, there's, so there's a big amount of staff, but also a lot of assistant coaches. So I think we have 
24 coaches who can be the mentor of one player. But we have the head coach of the group is, is the mentor of the guys, but they also have a lot of sub-mentors. That's one of the 24, which I mentioned earlier. Interesting. And then you mentioned you have a skills coach. Uh, tell us a little bit about him and his role or her role and then what, what sort of stuff they do. Yeah, his, his, his name is Thomas Rusink. He worked uh, um, a lot of abroad, so he loved a lot of um, uh, influence from, uh, for example, he went to uh, Qatar, he went to Portugal, he went to England. So you have a lot of experience. So he's a, skill, he's a skills coach. And um, so he's, he's in every day on another uh, development center. So he gives skills training. And it's, it's more about the basics in, in, in 1v1, uh, the attacking. So he um, is not, not, not juggling, but it's, it's, he, he has a lot of exercises where, where, where they have to master the ball and just on the attacking part. So no defensive part, just an attacking part. So he's responsible for exercises when he's not around that the coaches do the same things. And we have a skill box and he, um, he, uh, he practices skills and he gives perfect examples by himself, but also with, uh, with, with, with big players like Ronaldo, like Messi. So we have a big skill box and we can choose the skills who uh, is important for the, for the week. And he trains the skills with the guys and with the coaches and the players uh, when he's on a development center. And he's also responsible for the welfare. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird combination, but he was, uh, <laughs> he, he was, he was a teacher in school and he, he graduated uh, to become a teacher. So he's, he's, um, he's just for the skills and for the welfare of the kids. So that's the reason why he's every day on another development center. And so you mentioned 1v1 there. So obviously he does a lot of that. How important is 1v1 at the academy, the philosophy? Yeah, there was... Um, <laughs> Yeah, we we made a big change because uh, um, you have Pepin Lainos, who's now at Liverpool. He was uh, eight years ago, or maybe ten years ago, he was at PSV. And it was really the, the, the philosophy of uh, uh, one vs one. But when I came to PSV, there was just a team of dribblers. There were only dribblers when I uh, when I joined PSV. Um, so now it's, it's still important. And uh, if you look to under 10, I think 60 to 70 percent of the week is uh, is to be the master of one against one, but not only the attacking part but also the defensing part. If you look to under 11, under 12, it's more a combination of of, of passing and 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 dribbling, and the players have made their own decision what they think is the best in each situation. Um, so it's it, it's still really important. But if you look to our teams now, there's a bigger diversity in in outstanding abilities. So you still have uh, the dribblers, but you also have the deciders who pass really well. We also have really great defenders, but also great finishers. So if you look to the diversity of, of, of outstanding abilities, it's not only the dribbling part, but it's also uh, other outstanding abilities who, who weren't at the PSU when I joined them. So I suppose that's a, that's a conversation we have here a lot. I think in England, we went too far to the game-based approach. We never really had a 1v1 anyway. The clubs I worked with, we did a lot of 1v1, but in England, never really uh, embraced it. But we're, in too, we're away from technical stuff to too far game. But now it's about how do you... The, the, the challenge of combining the quality 1v1 work with the quality game-based stuff as well and getting that balance right. So how, how, do you, how do you do that? For example, then, you know, tell us about the younger age groups. How do you get that balance in the younger age groups? Yeah, we have... Um, we, we think in boxes. Um, so we have, uh, um, if you look to the pitch on Saturday, we, uh, we had uh, three boxes and we had two, um, we had two flanks. So we have two wings in our, in our strategy. And every, every week we have, uh, for example, you have uh, the three, the 10 and the nine. Three is more defensive, 10 is the box in the middle and nine is the, 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 the final third. And, and we make combination of the boxes each week. And for example, the first week is box three and 10. So which skills do you need to, to play in three and 10? So if you have a, a vertical pass from your, uh, from your center back to your midfielder, we, uh, we, train, we train the pass in every session that week. Uh, if you want to turn in box 10, uh, which turns do you need in box 10 to get rid of the player, to, to outplay the opponent? So we, we give them a lot of different skills. We fill the backpack uh, each week and on Saturday and in the games, we are focused on uh, the, the skills who are uh, who are main in in, the, in that training week, and the next week is box ten and nine, and the third week we um, 
we have the, uh, the, 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 the wings we put with it. So which skills do you need in a wing? And a wing is more one vs one, uh, like uh, Robertson from Liverpool, or um, in the middle is more to turn like Frankie De Jong, or, or or to pass like Henderson. So a lot of that skills we we combine with boxes and we give that exercise to our players. And the first hour is our skill training. So not skill training, just to dribble or one one v one, but also pass and move, pass and move, and we play positional games. A lot of neutral players that they come in, in, in the situation where they are at the game in, for example, box three or box 10. And the, the second hour, we play with operational space. Uh, so for example, if you play in box three and in box 10, there's an operational space be, behind the last line in box 10. Um, and we, 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 we don't tell players about their op operational space, but we create an environment where you have defenders who have to defend with a lot of uh, space in their backs. But also we have the striker who is also in run behalf the line line or the midfielder like Frankie De Jong. He comes in the ball, but he can also run behind the last line. So um, it's, it's, it's using uh, big information uh, about your question about the skills. But the skills are really important in the first hour. I mean, the second hour is more, more to create uh, your vision, how to move and how to run and to, um, to use the skills. Uh, which we train in the first hour of the session. So give us an example then, like an under nine session. What's a typical under nine session going to look like? Tell us about some of the, you know, the, the structure, the exercises. Yeah, the under nine is, is, is just different. Under nine, under 10 is just ball mastery. So we do a lot of 1v1 in a training session. I think it's more than an hour. And we, we put the focus on the skills, but not only the dribbling, but also the passing skills. But under nine, under 10 is more me in the ball and, you and I in the ball, so it's more driven and passing. Uh, but we, um, um, and we we put we, uh, we 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 change the operational spaces, and we don't tell about operational spaces. But you see a, a, a different behavior if you play in in a box for twenty five or twenty five. You play in a truck for twenty five or twenty five when a lot of space behind the line line. So you play twenty five and you play the length of fifty. So you see the behavior is going to change when you when you when you chase the size of of the pitch. Um, so the the first the first hour is 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 master master of one against one and uh, uh, get used of play in, in in the box. But the second hour is playing different sizes, uh, and we don't tell them things about under nine or under ten, but on, under eleven or under twelve, yeah, we uh, we we tell them what to do. So just not only come into the ball, but also make a run behind the line line. Uh, or deal with, uh, with with a lot of space in your back when you had the defender. So then, so you're saying that the 11s and 12s will be more, much, a bit more team game orientated in terms of yeah, it's it's more it's more decision. it's more more principles. It's the uh, um, they, they, we 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 filter uh, the rec, the rucksack and 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 they 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 uh, put the skills out of the rucksack what they need in in the particular game. So it's not not we 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 have principles for example. So, uh, um, for example, when you're on box 10, uh, uh, when do you have to turn and when you have to play a one, two, uh, um, when you have to play a pass and when do you, when do you have space on a dribble? So it's, it's, it's just, uh, um, uh, based on skills, but we, we have them in different situations. So they have to, they have to make a bigger of another a solution in each uh, different situation in, in, in the practice of the game. So, and that, that's, this is, this is the same, uh, with adaptability. When we when we change um, the players in a team, it's also to 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 adapt in different situation and practices, but also in, in in the game on Saturday. So let's talk a bit about the game on Saturday. Uh, how do you approach that in terms of you know winning? How important is winning? How do you set the team up? Those sorts of things. Yeah, we we, we don't have a, um, a big competition in Holland. We have, but the only uh, competitive game is against Ajax or. Sometimes again, finer. The other, uh, when we play on our uh, clubs in Holland, we, we win. So we play uh, eight, eight aside and we play twin games. So we have a, a squad of 20 players and we play in two sides. From two pitches, you play uh, eight aside. And the most, most of the games we win by 40 against eight or 50 against six. So we don't have a big competition on Saturday. Um, so we, uh, we, we changed the, the, the teams. Uh, every Saturday, 
uh, on uh, not only on performance but also on uh, biological age or, or length or, or things I want to improve or things I want to focus on. But when we play, for example, against Ajax or against Feyenoord, or we play uh, 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 tournaments, we play sometimes with our uh, uh, most potential players. And then against Ajax, we also have uh, a big competition. So that's, that's the main game in Holland between Ajax and between PSV and the foundation phase and the other games. Yeah, we, we don't have the competition uh, uh, what we want. So that's the reason why we play against uh, Club Bach, Bayern Munich, Genk or Anderlecht, big clubs uh, abroad. So how, so how often do you play Ajax uh, season? Now each age group, I think, six times uh, a year. Oh, wow. Okay. So then, so that's the question. So, for instance, when you're playing these local teams and you're you're winning forty to eight, how do you how do you challenge the players in there? How do you get those? What do you get other? Do you like to get other outcomes in there if the game is a little bit too easy for them? Yeah, they, I, we 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 move the players up. So um, we have um, under eleven players up that play with under twelve, and um, we also have two under thirteen teams, and they play eleven v eleven. So um, the, 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 the players um, that need more resistance, they play at under 13 to 11 v 11. So then, then you create space at under 12 for the most potential players from under 11. And then you make space from the best under 10 players and then we move them up to under 11. So we, we challenge the most potential players to move them up one or two years. Um, and if you are number uh, six in your own group instead of level, and the best five move up, and then you have a new role when you're at, at your own age group. So that's the reason why we move them up to uh, to get resistance. But it's really hard for us to uh, to have a good competition on Saturday. And then you have to you you can make solutions about you have to play with with, with uh, um, seven players, two A players, or you give them uh, rules. Then you have to touch the ball one or two times at your own half. But we don't like that because. Um, in my philosophy, it's good to be one, once a week the best player. So if they can be the best player on Saturday, let them be the best player. There's no, no problem. And we challenge them the rest of the week with our own, uh, in our own system. And, and so tell us about then the Ajax game, that big game. Obviously, how do you deal with that? Because suddenly now you've got a really competitive game. Do you want to win that game? Is that a thing of the club wants to win the, the Ajax fixture? Or is it... You know about development. Yeah, it's not it's not and not just the club or not just the coaches, the players and and, and the parents. They, 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 <laughs> we have a we have a winning environment. So in every session and every game on Saturday, they want to win. So we don't have to motivate them because they're motivated by themselves and by the parents. But it's it's not not quite different than than other games. But it's good for them to um, to get exciting for a game. And because you you need that in your in your pro career as a footballer, you need uh, you, uh, you need uh, exciting games. You have to be excited to play a game against Ajax. So sometimes it's uh, it's not a fight, but we 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 work hard, and Ajax works hard, and uh, um, the players are really happy that we won the last three games on eleven. For us as coaches, of course, it's also uh, it's also good to win. And in my role, it's good that we have our, we have the best players because we want to be, we want the best players in Holland from the south and from the middle and from the east and from the west. So we want our best players. It's good for me to see that that we win from from Ajax or the final, not only to win but also to see that we have to we have the the players the most as outstanding abilities who win the game. So because yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's, for me, it was always looking at the, looking at the game and say right, who has the, t the five top players. And who wants that? And if you've got, you know, more of those five, then obviously, surely that's this, the benchmark success, and you want to win as well, though. But right. So. Yeah, we we have the same. And this this uh, five years ago, it was who has the best dribbler, and now uh, who has the best defender or the best midfielder or the best finisher or the best dribbling. So it's the, the diversity is much bigger in the squads at PSV now, and that's the reason why we uh, why why we win a lot of tournaments, but also win a lot of games on on Saturdays, especially against Ajax. And then, so tell us a bit. What what formation do you like to play at eight v eight? Yeah, we 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 change it weekly because um, yeah, I told you we have uh, ownership is really important for us, but also uh, adaptability. So it doesn't matter which system you play, but it depends on if if we we have three we have three uh, basics. We would like to play uh, through th through the press. We would like to play uh, around the press, or we'd like to play over the press. So three principles in each week when you look to attacking. 
So, for example, if you played three three in the back and you played two midfielders and two strikers, there's a lot of a lot of chance you played through or you play over it. And for example, you played three one three. And you have four players uh, on the wings. Then it's the uh, then you play more around it. So, which is based on a training session. We choose our formation on Saturday. Uh, while we think uh, the the skills and the solution what we've trained the whole week uh, comes out on a game on Saturday. So we we, we change a lot of systems. Um, but we don't tell the kids we, we change systems because for them it's it's uh, because they train the whole week the same thing is for for them is 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 normal. And tell us a little bit about uh, competition tournaments. I know it's a big part of culture in Central Europe. Something we we discussed in academy football here for many years, and now we've got a lot better. How how many tournaments do your players play a year, and how important is that for their development? Yeah, in, in our opinion, it's really important and. This is the biggest uh, biggest change for me because I was at VVV and I went to PSV and we they cover all our costs and we, we get a lot of invitations each year for each age group to join really big tournaments in Europe. So um, so we, we have a really small budget, but we don't need a budget because they cover all our costs. So in, I think in each age group we play 10 to 12 tournaments. But because uh, we have a big, uh, big squad, uh, I think each player plays four or five tournaments a year um, and three are abroad and two are in Holland but in Holland we also have yeah, you, you know we have a lot of big tournaments for big clubs from from England or in Spain or in, in Italy but we, we're quite we're quite glad and we're quite happy that we are um, most of the time abroad because it's good for uh, the development of kids not just as a footballer but also the person to uh, to go abroad to go on a plane to go in a hotel to have uh, uh, three times uh, uh, something to eat in a restaurant, and have to deal with different kind of, yeah, you know, of kids, of, of of or parents, or sometimes our guest parents. For example, last year we went to Finland, and uh, the Finnish parents uh, weren't able to speak really good English, and our kids can speak four, or five, six words English. So it was really hard for them to uh, to uh, have a good conversation with the kids and, and with the parents. Uh, but it's good for them to deal with. To become uh, to become not only uh, a better player but also a better person. So for us, it's really important. So we're really uh, sad that the last tournament's cancelled during the coronavirus, um, because uh, we are quite uh, quite happy to play the tournaments. And and tell us how easy is it, and how often do you play? You mentioned you go to play Genk and Munich and stuff like that. How often do you go, you know, cross border to play fixtures and friendlies? Now because. Um, um, because the lack of competition in our own country is, is really good for us. But sometimes when we have to travel three hours each Saturday with kids to play in a good good competition game, uh, we don't like that. So I think we do it once a month from each age group. So I think uh, eight times eight times a year and four times they come to uh, to Eindhoven and four times we go to uh, to Germany or to uh, to Genk or to Anderlecht in, in, in Belgium. So I think once a month from, from each age group. And then we play, I think, each player plays five to six tournaments. So they have a lot of uh, experience with, uh, with play against or uh, cooperate with, uh, with, with foreign and with, with, with players abroad. And tell us a bit about uh, position-specific uh, stuff in the academy. What, what age do you start putting players in positions and what, how much position stuff do they do specifically in training a week? Um, in the foundation phase, we, we switch the players in each position in under 10. And in under 11, um, they have two or three positions when they play in. Um, but it, this is a sort of combination. Uh, so and a, a center back can play as, uh, as a central midfielder. And a, a striker can play also as a central midfielder. But a right winger can't play left fullback. Um, so you make combinations of, um, of positions in our foundation phase in under 12 and under 11. So you have one um, performance performance uh, uh, position you have one uh, develop um, uh, position and we have a combination between both positions on a game on Saturday and we we teach them the skills what they need on both positions um, in, in in the youth academy in our foundation phase and that if I look to on the 13 on the 14 on the 15 yeah it's it's they, they play uh, just just on their own position and sometimes they switch but in our foundation phase yeah, just uh, as uh, other things you have to adapt, you also have to adapt in different positions. So in under 10, they play in every uh, position. 
And on 11, on the 12 was more base, like the position where they can perform really well when they join the first team. And, and, and when they move up to 13, 14, 15, do they do specific position specific training with positions coaches or anything like that? Yeah, you have specialized coaches, you know, former uh, PSV players, but it's more like uh, you have an attacking uh, coach and, and coach you coach the midfielders and a coach you coach the defenders. So it's not 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 uh, based on position. It's more based on uh, your abilities, your outstanding ability, or things you want to improve. So this this is not not different than a foundation phase. But I think we switch we we switch more in positions than um, the development phase. I think that's that's the biggest difference. And um, and what about yourself? What do you do yourself to develop and keep yourself fresh and you know coming up with new ideas? Yeah, if I. I told you before, I went three times to uh, to West Ham. It was really eye-opening for me uh, because one of my uh, main goals is to work in England. So I think there's a lot of information in England. So uh, last month during the coronavirus, I had a lot of webinars. And I spoke to uh, Chelsea, spoke to Arsenal, spoke to West Ham, spoke to Nottingham. Um, so this, this for me, um, my main goal is to, to work in England. In, in maybe in three or four or five years. So I have a lot, a lot of conversations and chats with, with, with the clubs in England. Um, and also I'd be an assistant coach uh, at PSV at under 15 and under 40 at the moment. So I, I've, I think, eight or nine sessions each week in a development center so that's, uh, of a development phase. Um, so that's, I, that's the reason why I challenge myself every day. So if I, I, think I, I think I work 60 to 70 hours each week at PSV. Uh, not only for the for for the foundation phase, but just to challenge myself in uh, in on the 15, on the 14. And last last year I was on a 16 assistant coach, so that's the reason why I have a, a good combination between uh, between the both phases. And what, what's your experience has been of English teams that have come over and played in the tournaments over there, or when you've played English teams over here? Yeah, I, I I like I like the work rate. They always they always work hard. They always tackling hard. And uh, um, I think that's if if if, if parents or, or or coaches or, or, or children ask me who do you think is the best player in the world, and as I, I say for five years, I say Jordan Henderson is in my opinion the best football player in the world, and they look at me, they think I'm really crazy, uh, but that's what I like in English football because he has he has um, he, he works really hard. He's such a leader on the pitch. Um, he, he passes a lot. He, he, he runs a lot. He works very hard. But he is, in my opinion, his his biggest advantage is he has he has self knowledge. Uh, Henderson knows exactly what 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 where he's really good at, but he knows exactly what he can't. So when I look to English teams, uh, the work rate is is absolutely uh, absolutely superb, and I I, I like that. So um, that I I changed that three years ago when I worked at PSV because they trained four and a half four and a half hours. A week, and now we train ten hours a week. So, in my opinion, you have to work harder. You have to do more than your opponents to to become better each day. So that's yeah, that's that's the reason why I like in English football. And you see that in the teams where we play against, they always put high pressure. They always tackle hard. Uh, they are sometimes cheeky, uh, which we which we which we don't are at the moment now. But once we improve, so that's that's yeah, that's really really good for us to compete with the, the best uh, uh, teams in England. And what advice would you give to a parent who has a young, talented footballer in the family? Yeah, um, have confidence in the club where you, where, where, what you choose. So if you choose PSV, have confidence in, uh, in, in, in us as, as coaches or me as a head of the uh, foundation phase because we have a philosophy where we believe in. So the advice for parents is to uh, don't put enough pressure to the kid and let them let them be the kid and let them let them be explore uh, and to develop really well. But also give uh, advice to when you choose for a club. And I'm really glad that all the parents have a lot of confidence in how we work at PSV because we have a lot of presentations and webinars during the year to tell them exactly why we do things. But um, don't put enough pressure on your kid and let let the kid be the kid and let them explore themselves. Uh, what they want to develop in not only our standing skills but also things that want they want to improve. And sometimes they make a mistake on Saturday, but don't don't judge the uh, the mistakes and let the kid explore uh, the things he wants to learn. 
And what about last bit, Lee, advice for a coach, someone who wants to have a fantastic career like yourself, you've already had, what would career would you be for a young coach starting on their journey? Yeah, it's just, just like, uh, like John Henderson, you have, you have to be, you have, you, you have to need self-confidence, not self-confidence, but also self-knowledge. Um, you have to make mistakes and you have to, you, you put yourself in, in a situation where you can learn a lot and you can make mistakes, but also you have to know what, what, what you're good at, what, what you, what you're not really good at. Um, and for me, uh, if I looked at myself, I, I'm, I'm not a, I, have, I don't have a, a great career as a, as a professional footballer. I don't have any uh, education uh, uh, in, uh, in football or in physicality or whatever. Um, I, I learned my lessons by doing it. So, um, and, if, if, and you have to set goals because I have a lot of targets I want to reach in my career and, and I still have the targets and I do everything to reach the target. I, I don't have, I don't have a, a girlfriend. I don't have kids. I live in a really small home near to, uh, to Eindhoven. I live in a really small place and um, really small house near Venlo at VV where I worked on. So I move every time to, uh, to achieve my goals and to work near where I, uh, where I work. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I think that's the, the, the main things. If you want to improve yourself, you have to do everything. You have to work 60, 70 hours a week to, to achieve what you want to achieve and what you want to reach. So work hard, set, set targets, but know yourself is, uh, in my opinion, is the beginning of all wisdom. So, um, that's, that, I think that's the best advice. Yep. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. It's been fantastic. Okay, no problem. Thank you.